Hello again from KB America. In a past video, we talked about closed loop control. In this video, we'll go into a little bit more detail on the PI controller used in that closed loop speed control. How does a PI controller work in a VFD? So you might remember from our past video, this is a basic block diagram of closed loop control. On the input side, you have the command speed, and on the output side, you have the actual output to the motor. The feedback includes the encoder feedback, which can be an incremental or a resolver, for example. And then you also have the motor model, which is the drive's electronic equivalent to the motor. Both of these are fed into the speed control, which is the PI controller we'll talk about today. And then the current control, which takes all of that feedback and calculates what the output to the motor has to be. The PI, or proportional and integral controller, is a commonly used method in control systems to account for error between the command and actual values. In a KEB drive, this actual value can be from encoder feedback or using our SCL control. The first step of the PI controller is to calculate the error at a certain point in time. This is simply just the command speed minus the actual speed. This error is then fed into the full PI control algorithm. Now the PI controller can be broken up into its two respective parts. The first half is the simpler of the two and is the proportional. The second and slightly more complex of the two is the integral portion. Now let's focus on the proportional section in a little bit more detail. The first part of the proportional is the bias. In a standard control system, the bias will be simply set to your desired output value on startup. Thus, with no error, your output value will be exactly equal to your command value. The second portion begins with the KP, or proportional controller gain. This is a programmable value in the KEB drive. This is multiplied by your error term. So a larger error has more effect on the output, and importantly, a larger controller gain also has a larger effect on the control. So with a higher gain, you'll more quickly adapt to error in the system. Now we'll look at the slightly more complex integral portion of the control algorithm. This still starts with your proportional control gain, but then it's divided by your integral time constant. This value is also programmable in the drive, and it's important to note that because you're dividing by that term, a smaller value will have a harder effect on the control. It's also important to note that these two values influence each other, so it may take some trial and error while tuning your drive to get them just right. These two values are then multiplied by the integral sum of the error over time. The important part about this is that because it's the entire sum of the error across the run of the system, it's not just the single error at a point in time. So no matter what, as long as there has been error, it'll be adjusting the control. This is why the integral term is used to offset long-term error in the system. Next, we'll see how the PI controller is implemented by looking at a graph of the command and actual speed. So in this graph, you can see in pink, the command speed jump immediately from zero to 1,000 RPM and then stay constant. However, due to real-world factors such as a high inertia or current limits, your orange actual speed won't be able to perfectly follow the command speed, thus an error is introduced. So for instance, at this point in time, the error, we'll call this time five seconds. So at error at time five is roughly 500 RPM. This error is then fed back into your uh, PI control algorithm is multiplied by the proportional control factor. The integral control portion is a little bit more difficult to calculate because we can't simply just subtract the command speed versus the actual speed. Instead, we must take the integral from time zero to the current point in time of the control. We can get a rough estimate of this by adding up the area between the command and actual speeds in our graph. Now for a rough estimate of this graph, we can imagine this is time two, and then at the very end when it crosses here is time eight. Thus we have a six second time here, and then an error of a thousand. If we roughly guess that it's that's half of a square, we get an error of 3000. We would do the same thing up here to calculate the error. Your error would actually be negative. So if we just roughly ballpark that this is say a quarter of the size of that area, your error will equal to negative 750. So at this point in time, your error would be 300 minus 750 for your integral term. So with this graph, you can see how the error is roughly calculated and then fed back into your PI control algorithm. The PI controller is a robust yet fast responding closed loop system. 
This allows the drive by only adjusting two parameters to achieve fast acting response to error between the command and actual speed while also adjusting for long-term error in the system. This allows the drive to achieve precise speed control of a motor. If you enjoyed this video and found the content useful, please like and subscribe to our KEB America YouTube channel and check back later for more video content.